All right, take four. First rule of this channel, we do not talk about the channel. Second rule of this channel, this is not legal advice. So welcome to After Waivers for Week 16. Hopefully this is like your second round or your semis of whatever playoffs you're into, or you just really like fantasy football so much that you're going to spend your time with me. Now, I've, I've had some stuff going on in the background here. Uh, I had to fix a leaky washer, and I also uh, have had some problems with sleeper. So hopefully this will be shorter and sweeter. Um, that, that should go along with uh, having gotten to your uh, fantasy semis that you're, you should know who you got and you should be kind of focusing a little bit more on making things a little bit troublesome for your opponents out there in, uh, you know, you know, for your playoffs. So let's see what I have written down for my notes. So I, a lot of defenses, a lot of blocks that are going on right now. Um, and we're going to be looking at things like the, the Jalen Hurts thing that happened on Monday night and trying to make sure that we can, uh, you know, be prepared if there are things that come out and, uh, come out of nowhere. So this is a little weird week because of Christmas, we see that there's a, um, a Thursday night game, two Saturday night games. Our, our Sunday slate is uh, smaller, and then there's three Monday night games on uh, you know Christmas. So like, be advised. Um, a good rule of thumb I bring up before is the, your flex should be your latest guy in that your know, running back, tight end, wide end type of uh, position. And then uh, also uh, the other thing that I would like to do is make sure that I have multiple guys that I can fill in depending on injuries. And again, that means that like I might have to have uh, pick up guys that I don't necessarily want to run because I have to have the flexibility on Monday. It's one of the things, um, the league that I did lose, even if Jalen Hurts had not played, I wouldn't have had, the, my my roster was already locked by the time I realized that uh, Jalen Hurts was not potentially going to be able to play on Monday night. So that's just something to be aware of. Overall, from uh, the real-life playoffs, and this is going to have a lot of ramifications when it comes to uh, basically what teams want to see from their guys going forward, how much they're going to play them. Uh, the Ravens, the Dolphins, the Chiefs, um, and the Jaguars are the top four seeds. Uh, the Browns are sticking around, even though like there are certain things that say that they should not be. Uh, the Bengals are the sixth seed. The Colts are the seventh seed. The Texans are the eighth, and the Bills are the ninth. And after that, I'm like, I think that the the Steelers and the Broncos have a hard road. Um, and then the Raiders and the Chargers should or should be eliminated. They're not quite actually eliminated. Titans, the Jets, and the Patriots are in the NFC. The 49ers um, are the one seed. The Cowboys, uh, the Lions, and the Buccaneers are the three and the four. The Eagles are the fifth. They're uh, already clinched. Uh, Vikings, Rams are the sixth and the seventh. Uh, Seahawks and the Saints have the same mathematical uh, wins losses uh, as the Vikings and the Rams. Uh, Falcons and the Packers are six and eight. Falcons and the Saints can backdoor their way in as the four seed at the winner of the NFC South. Uh, Giants still are. It's the Giants and Bears are still mathematically in this. Uh, commanders and Cardinals and Panthers are eliminated. So let's get into this. Uh, like I said, I've had uh, some problems with my uh, sleeper and um, you know some time this week. I do have my notes. They are kind of a bridge. So uh, hopefully we'll get through this fast. Uh, I don't have a lot to say about the 49ers this week. The two big things, if you are a CMC owner, you kind of have to decide how much uh, Jordan Mason and Eli Mitchell are worth. Uh, Eli Mitchell is out again. Jordan Mason, I wouldn't be particularly interested in uh, rolling those guys out as cuffs uh, at this particular point. I'd be more interested in using those roster spots to block. In my uh, my high school league that I'm still alive in, uh, there aren't any quarterbacks available primarily because everybody realizes that I'm streaming a quarterback. And uh, they, you know, you're looking at rosters where some of these guys have three or four quarterbacks on their their roster, trying to make sure that they can choke out their opponents. So, you know, it's not going to be uh, kind of weird in a lot of leagues to see uh, lineup or benches that are full of quarterbacks and uh, defenses. So that's kind of the thing that you're looking for. Like some of these uh, waiver wire pickups this week are just not going to be really relevant to a lot of league leagues winning outside of like really deep leagues where you're really having to find those wide receiver threes to win you some time. Uh, going forward, I don't have anything to say about the wide receivers, the tight end, Kittle. Uh, defensively, I probably would be going in a different direction uh, against their Baltimore matchup. San Francisco is uh, obviously a set and forget defense, but I mean, I if I can find a better matchup that I think has a better upside than uh, maybe getting a 40 degree day, I'd probably do that. Um, Bears, I think Justin Fields is going to have the leash to finish the season off uh, to see what they have. They're going to have two high draft picks, one of them being the pa Panthers, but you know they are going to finish the season off. He's going to have uh, two good matchups, 16 and 17, Arizona and Atlanta to finish things off. Uh, would be a little bit interesting in Atlanta because I definitely could see uh, him being really good in that offense next year. You know, uh, 
the we'll get to that with when we get to the Falcons actually. Um, when it comes to the Bears running game, Roshan led the backfield at 49% snaps. Uh Khalil Herbert was at 23, and then uh Deontay Foreman was at 26. Coaches said it was going to be a hot hand. That's what they're going to go with. Um, outside of maybe picking up one of these three guys and hoping that one of the guys is inactive. Um, I just don't know how anybody's going to be able to predict this backfield. Uh, Justin Her Fields is going to be the no main guy to get a rushing touchdown. And then after that, you're trying to get pick up the scraps. It is a good matchup. So outside of like really deep leagues where you really are trying to scrape the bottom of the barrel and get like, you know, uh, a potential spike week based off a guy that's not predictive. I just don't know. Uh, nothing to say about DJ Moore, Cole Komet. Um, I'm rolling those guys in most leagues. Uh, the Bears defense is a sneaky good play against Arizona. I don't know how much I would really think that they they are great. Uh, Kyler Murray's not bad. I don't think he's a good quarterback. I don't think he's bad. Um, he is a little scrambler. Uh, not entirely a turnover machine. Um, not the greatest when it comes to sacks. So like. They are probably like a mid-range plus. I do like them this week. Um, you know, if you can get them against Arizona, again, if I was roll, I would feel better about rolling the Bears defense out against Arizona than trying to guess the outcome of the 49ers and the Ravens. Uh, if you're if you're you know putting me on the spot, uh, when it comes to Cincinnati overall, uh, Jake Browning, I don't particularly love the matchup against Pittsburgh. I think it's an okay matchup. Gardner Minshew had three touchdown passes. I could definitely see that being in the range of outcomes. Uh, you know, it's just going to be ugly. There's not going to be a need for higher passing volume more than likely in this game. Um, but again, like Bro Brock Purdy, you know, uh, you know, poor man's Brock Purdy, uh, 40 degree day with a chance of a little bit more is a good way to be looking at it. Uh, Joe Mixon had 70% snaps. So, uh, us trying to track that Chase Brown was going to continue to eat into Joe Mixon didn't happen. I do think Chase Brown is a very valuable guy from a fantasy playoffs perspective. If Joe Mixon goes down, he's going to jump all the way up to RB1 type status. Uh, so I would be uh, picking him up whether or not I have Joe Mixon. If I'm Joe Mixon owner, I would be picking him up. And if I if I was a Joe Mixon owner, I probably have been sticking around um, and would be in the semi. So I you know if I haven't picked him up yet, I would be picking him up. Uh, Jamar Chase is trending towards not playing this week with a shoulder as I zip through this really fast. Um T. Higgins, it would upgrade him potentially even to running or wide receiver one type range. Uh, Tyler Boyd, I imagine, is going to stay as that uh, you know wide receiver three slot guy. Um, the guy Trenton Irwin, who did step in for T. Higgins being out, he didn't get the bump based off of Jamar Chase missing some of this game. You see that Chase was down to seventy one percent snaps. Trenton Irwin was uh, down to fourteen percent snaps. So the guy in deeper leagues, if you're chasing the the uh, opportunities. Uh, Andre Iovas, the uh, rookie from Princeton, the sixth rounder that we've been tracking, he got the jump to 26% snaps, two targets, one reception for five yards. So that would be the guy that I could definitely see falling into the Jamar Chase type of role uh, if he's out and you're chasing that. The, I'm still not uh, concerned with the tight ends here. Tanner Hudson, only 36% uh, snaps, did go five for five for 49 I don't know what they're doing with their tight ends. I'm not going to chase a guy that has that low a snap share. Drew Samples, the blocker. And then uh, Irv Smith was 24% snaps, three for two for 18. So again, I'm not chasing any of that. The defense is going to have some appeal uh, against Pittsburgh. A slight downgrade to uh, the Bengals because Mitch Tribb is not going to be the quarterback, which means they're not going to see a turnover machine uh, type of quarterback. Mason Rudolph can be a turn uh, can turn the football over. He's a little bit more of a game manager. So that would downgrade uh, streaming the uh, Cincinnati Bengals overall, uh, the Bills. So this is a little odd. So Josh Allen in this game, uh, uh, 7 for 15 for 94 and a touchdown to go along with 8 for 24 and a touchdown. Uh, got you a 40-degree day. Dallas, or they went out and they ran the football for like 300 yards against Dallas. Didn't throw the football. What we can we take away from this? Well, it probably puts James Cook in this really weird range where he was up to 56% snaps, 25 for 179, a touchdown to go along with three for two for 42 and another touchdown. He's probably going to stay in that like mid to low end uh, RB1 range, even though he's not on the field with that high snap share. It does look like this is, has something to do with the usage and rotation for the Bills. Uh, James Cook is a smaller guy, uh, so I definitely think, see that they just don't want to put him in a position where they have to use him up when you know he's going to be doing something stupid like pass blocking. So Latavius Murray did get a rushing touchdown 
And then uh, Ty Johnson, you know, he did have 29% of the snaps, uh, nine for 54 in the blowout. So what does that do for uh, me when it comes to the running game? Nothing. I'm still rolling out my cook chairs and I feel pretty good about it. Overall, the other interesting thing when it comes to the Bills, uh, Stefan Diggs in the blowout was down to, uh, where is it? I can just look at it here. 46% snaps, uh, five for four for 48. And uh, the only other guy that I maybe would be thinking about rolling out was Gabe Davis at 72% snaps. After that, like Trent Sherfield was a guy who got uh, 57% of the snaps. Some guys are in the league to pass block or to run block, even as wide receivers. I don't know what this means when it comes to the script when they play the Chargers this week. It, it is a good matchup for the Bills when it comes to fantasy perspective. We're expecting the blowout. Um, everybody could eat. Uh, I did see that the, some places that the Cowboys have a lot of problems stopping the run up the middle. That's maybe why the Bills decided to go with their game plan that they did this week. Uh, but trying to expect that the Bills are going to be run heavy again against the Chargers. Chargers can't stop the run either. They're bad defense. I could see having a very similar script against the Chargers. I could see that they go out, they could throw it all over the yard. It does downgrade Stefan Diggs. It would potentially put Gabe Davis on the field if he's the guy getting the snap share. Uh, the two tight ends in this offense, Dalton Kincaid is the blocker, or excuse me, Dalton Kincaid is the pass blocker, or Dalton Kincaid is the pass receiver. Uh, I would not expect him to be involved unless it's a, a, a shootout type of script at this point. Dawson Knox would elevate him to just be on the field if he is the run blocker. 62% snaps, no targets this week, but I, I could definitely see that if they are going to be a run-heavy team to finish the season off, and go into playoffs, uh, you know, something that we can maybe predict is going to happen against the Chargers, who are bad defense. And then the Bills are going to have be one of the better defenses uh, to finish this uh, fantasy season off against the Chargers and then the Patriots. All right, Broncos. So Russell Wilson got it done with uh, you know a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown against Detroit in that blowout. You know, when you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, I don't know how predictive the New England game is going to be before they play the Chargers. I, you know, he's still going to be in that like low end type of streamer range, uh, high end or low end streamer overall. Uh, probably slight downgrade against the Patriots. Uh, Javante disappointed against the uh, Detroit. Only forty eight percent snaps, uh, twelve for, for twenty seven, two for two for negative seven. Again, Against New England, I would expect that like it's going to be a very ugly game to be rolling him out there. Uh, the one thing that I would talk about a little bit when it comes to the wide receivers, the Patriots do tend to take away the number one option in the passing game. That would make me think this is a Jerry Judy week, believe that or not. Uh, he was at 63% snap, 7 for 3 for 74. Uh, the only two other thing to talk about this is little Jordan Humphrey did have a touchdown catch. He was up to 54% snaps in the blowout. Uh, Marvin Mims, two targets, 42% snaps. So, you know, outside of that, like, you know, and uh, Corlin Sutton being, you know, the main guy, uh, you know, 94% snap, six for five for 71. That's how I see it rolling out. The Broncos are going to have uh, some sneaky appeal against uh, the Patriots this week. All right, moving on to the Browns. So I talked about this in uh, Chasing the Dragon uh, when it comes to Joe Fl Flacco and sleepers finally functioning. Uh I don't know how predictive that we can say that the, the Cleveland is going to continue to be a 45-44 uh, pass attempt a game uh, team. And this is against what looks like the Texans that are going to have a backup quarterback and then the New York Jets to finish the season off. So, you know, expecting that Joe Flacco is going to continue to be a streamer with these matchups going on, I don't know how much of the passing volume we're going to get. Maybe he can continue to get the uh, passing touchdowns, but the passing volume is probably likely not going to be there. Running back wise, these next two games that do kind of predict to be uh, you know grinder type games. Uh, Jerome Ford is going to be the 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 high efficiency back. Uh, we're still sticking with Kareem Hunt being the guy who could fall in the end zone overall. Um, there is a little bit of interesting stuff to talk about when we when we get to the Browns wide receivers to finish the season off. Amari Cooper may be the number two in this offense behind Najoku, but he's going to be the guy that's going to get the higher efficiency plays. Um, he did have 124 air yards on his eight targets and a touchdown. So that, that could be something that I can expect to go on. But uh, if they're using him as that higher efficiency type of player um, down the line, the lower with the lower probability throws, that means that you could have that absolute like, you know, uh, uh, you know, sub 40 degree day that'll lose you a week over the na next two weeks matchups. So that's something to also be paying attention to. Uh 
Let's see, Cedric Tillman was back on the table a little bit. If we are following this, 72% snaps, eight targets, four receptions, 52 yards of that. Uh, so again, if we're trying to, to look at what we're looking at, maybe there's a spike week on the table with these guys. I don't like the next two weeks matchups at all. Uh, considering David Njoku, maybe the team's number one with the 14 targets. Uh, again, these the Houston game is probably going to be uglier. They are now projected to win based off the fact CJ Stroud is going to be out. So again, I don't know how much they're going to have to be aggressive against uh, you know the Houston and the backup quarterback. Lower lower passing volume probably can be uglier and still win the game. Same thing with the Jets. Uh, so like that probably downgrades the passing toys for Cleveland to finish the season off. And the defense is looking like they're a really good play against uh, Houston if uh, CJ Stroud is going to be out. All right, Buccaneers. So uh, when you're wrong, you're wrong. Bo Baker Mayfield, four touchdowns to go, uh, four touchdown passes to go along with 381 through the air. Uh, Rashad White is going to be an RB1, 81% snaps, 21 of uh, 89, two for two for 50 and a touchdown. Uh, good matchups against Jacksonville, not a good ma matchup uh, in the finals against the Saints, but he can get it done in the passing game. That's why he's an RB1. Uh, Chase uh, Edmonds is the cuff right now, but I don't know how much I would be caring if someone rolled him out against me or I had him on my, my bench. The, one of the other interesting thing is Chris Godwin uh, this week, he had 95 air yards with the spike week, 81% snaps, 12 uh, targets, uh, 10 receptions, 155 yards. And that flops because Mike Evans has been the air yards guy for most of the season. Uh, he only had 57 air yards, uh, six for four for 57, did get the touchdown to stay relevant. I don't know if that necessarily downgrades Mike Evans and upgrades Chris Godwin to finish the season off. The two matchups, uh, Jacksonville, I would like against them. Um, and then New Orleans, you know, we could definitely see that uh, they are going to potentially take one of these two guys away. And if it's a man game, um, maybe that's a Chris Godwin game or excuse me, a Mike Evans game. Um, overall, Chris Godwin, if he's the guy who who finds the zone underneath, but that's two weeks away. Uh, right now, uh, I do definitely I, I after saying a couple weeks ago, like, you know, would I play Chris or uh, Chris Godwin? Who would I bench him for? You know, would I worry about playing him? I would be concerned about seeing Chris Godwin on someone else's roster, something I couldn't say a couple weeks ago. I don't know how much I would necessarily upgrade him into saying I have to be starting him. The Buccaneers are um, an interesting role if CJ Beathard's the quarterback. We'll talk more about CJ Beathard when we get to the Jacksonville. But if if the Jacksonville Jaguars are the or if the backup quarterback is rolling, then that would mean the Buccaneers would be in that streamability range. All right, Cardinals. So uh, Kyler Murray has not necessarily been uh, good at, at football. That's something we were worried about. Two interceptions this week against San Francisco. And what would be, in my mind, a predictive bench did have a six for 49. Uh, the Chicago Bears have looked better. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles have not. So, like, you know, if you're rolling him out, like, you can make that decision. Overall, from the backfield standpoint, James Conner only 49% snaps, but he was very efficient, 14 for 86, and a touchdown to go with three targets, three receptions for only three yards. The other interesting thing, it was expecting Michael Carter to eat a little bit into – uh James Conner, he didn't do that. The only other guy in the backfield of any note, uh, Amari Di Mercado, was at 24% snaps in the blowout, four for 64, and a touchdown. One of those being a, a long one of like 49 yards, and another three for one for six. So again, trying to guess uh, who the actual handcuff is and whether or not we actually care to be cuffing him in the uh, Cardinal offense. Primarily, that might be dictated upon the next two weeks matchups. And I don't think I would really care about the next two weeks matchups going forward. Uh, wide receivers, I'm not really interested in any of these guys. Marquise Brown left again with a heel after 42% snaps. Michael Wilson at 88% snaps, only three targets. And again, part of this is because Kyler Murray has not been uh, very accurate uh, throwing to the sidelines. Uh, you know, this season, he's primarily been looking at Trey, uh, Trey McBride. Trey McBride probably is a unicorn at this point. He is the number one in this offense, 11 targets. 10 receptions, 102 yards, and a touchdown, or uh, excuse me, a fumble not lost. And the other thing to be pointing out with Trey McBride, um, I do think he can uh, potentially, or he is probably the upgrade to Travis Kelsey. Um, I do think he, he also could be rolled out as a flex in a lot of leagues. He is, you know, he is that valuable at this point, uh, depending on who you have as a flex. You know, the dreaded two tight end comp, comp could potentially be on the table for some teams that are out there. 
uh, the Chargers. So they fired their head coach and their general manager. This is one of the teams I was talking about uh, when it comes to uh, teams having different things to play for. Um, remember, all the guys that are on the table are no longer this regime's guys. Uh, so the, the ownership could say, hey, we want to see what we have in this guy. We want to see what we don't have in this guy. The GM's gone. They have no attachments to anybody. Uh, there are a lot of videos out there talking about how bad a situation is actually going on with the Chargers when it comes to the salary cap. The biggest thing that they have is, uh, you know, a franchise quarterback, Justin Herbert. He's not available for the rest of the year. Um, when it comes to Easton Stick, the three touchdown passes he came were in the second half of the blowout. I don't know how much I'd be trusting even to get garbage time against Buffalo, especially if they're going to be running the football. So that's something for you to decide. I could definitely see Austin Eckler getting uh, shut down. He's not on a contract next year. Uh, the big news in the blowout against the Raiders, Isaiah Spiller was up to 37% snaps, uh, 16 for 50. Is that something to be monitoring? Uh, and I don't, I don't know how much I would necessarily be caring about that other than if I'm in a, a league where I might be rolling the guy out as a deep sleeper to finish the season off. Uh, when it comes to wide receivers for the Chargers, again, Keenan Allen has a very limited reason to play the rest of the year out. Um, DNP on Tuesday, so I'd be expecting him not to play. Uh, Josh Palmer would project as the number one in what would be at best like an unpredictive offense with Eastern Stick. Um, again, his touchdown pass came on a blown coverage. Uh, it was like 72 yard, 79 yarder. So again, I don't know how much I'd be trusting any of this against Buffalo. The guy that maybe gets a spike out of all this is Quentin Johnston. He was up to 92% snaps. I could definitely see ownership stepping in and saying, Hey, he needs to be given the opportunity. We need to see if he's a bust, uh, in dynasty leagues, I would be potentially cutting bait from him. Um, remember the guys that brought him in just got fired. The, the franchise has very little to uh, care about whether or not he succeeds or not, because the guys that brought him in don't aren't going to are, aren't there to protect him next year. Um, from a tight end perspective, again, Gerald Everett is going to be some type of streamer. Uh, you know, sixty three percent snaps did have the eight targets, five receptions, forty one yards, and a fumble not lost. Some of these were uh, design screens too. And the defense, yeah, they're really bad. I'm not touching them. Uh, KC. Uh, we did uh, talk about benching Patrick Mahomes in a matchup against uh, New England. He did have a 40-degree day. I, I still generally think that the Raiders may give him a little bit of trouble this week. So, like, I, I don't think he's necessarily a good start. Um, probably not a bad start either. So, I don't know if I would necessarily get cute against the Raiders. Uh, from the running back situation for the Chiefs, Isaiah Pacheco is expected to play this week. Uh, if he doesn't go, Clyde is going to be in that volume-based, low-efficiency range. Um, I don't know how many red zone opportunities he's going to get whatsoever. Jarek McKinnon got two red zone opportunities this game. He did cash in, one for a, a throwing touchdown, one for a receiving touchdown. You know, If you're the type of person that does like to roll a guy out that's going to probably get somewhere in the range of like four to eight opportunities a game, some of them being very high opportunities, uh, High value opportunities in the red zone. You know, he's your guy. He's done it before in the past when he's been able to finish the seasons off with all these touchdowns. Um, so, yeah, he's still on the table uh, if Isaiah Pacheco does not come back. The big news out of all of this is that Rasheed Rice was up to 92% snaps in this game, nine for nine for 90, 91 a touchdown. So, not only does this kind of downgrade all the running backs, even if Pacheco is back, it downgrades Travis Kelsey. Rasheed Rice had three red zone targets. Travis Kelsey had one. Uh, Sky Moore was IR'd with a knee. Uh, Justin Ross is coming back off the exemplif uh, from his uh, legal problems that are going on. So I could definitely see him getting in the rotation. Um, I'm not really interested in about any of the other wide receivers that are going on. I don't know why Kadarius Tony is even getting the snaps that he is. Uh, I did read on uh, Reddit that uh, Travis Kelsey uh, did get dinged in the game. And they did bring in some tight ends. So uh, be advised for tomorrow's injury report. He might pop up on this. Uh, if you are a Kelsey owner and you are worried, then you are you, the easiest route to go is just go pick up Noah Brown. He's going to be in that streaming range. Uh, you know, if Kelsey is a downgrade already because of Rasheed Rice, you know, this would also downgrade uh, Gray. So like it would not necessarily matter if I could go get a better tight end uh, than Noah Gray anyway. Uh, the defense is not not necessarily a an, uh, good play against the Raiders this week. I think they are streamable. I, they just go from a priority stream to like you know a middle of the road, a, 
okay matchup. Let's see, Colts. So Gardner Minshew does throw the three touchdown passes uh, against the Steelers this week. He does have another okay matchup against Atlanta. Um, I don't know how much we can necessarily predict he's going to have another three touchdown passes. He's going to be a generally good floor. It's going to be more about the uh, running backs in this game. So Jonathan Taylor is trending towards playing. I don't know if he is. They just say he's trending towards playing. Zach Moss uh, did get knocked out with a shoulder. He says he wants to play. The other two guys in this, I talked about this yesterday. Trey Sermon did get uh, 17 carries on 43% snaps. Uh, and then uh, Tyler Goodson, he did go back to the practice squad, but he did have 28% snaps, two for two for 10 uh, as a receiver to go along with 11 for 69. Michael Pittman uh, is out. Looks like with a concussion at this point. The guy who moved in and got his snaps was DJ Montgomery. Um, I don't think he's necessarily fi fantasy viable. I do think this may move Alec Pierce up into a low-end streamer uh, as a wide receiver too. I, I, I don't necessarily think that Josh Downs is uh, substantially upgraded because with uh, Michael Pittman being knocked out, his snaps remained at 58%, uh, only 58% snaps. He, he does look like he's going to be a slot-only type of player in this offense. I'm not going to trust any of the tight ends, so we're not going to talk about that. My Will Mallory dart throw didn't work out. Uh, overall, with the uh, Colts defense, they are a good play this week. Taylor Heineke is kind of a turnover machine. Uh, he is not necessarily an upgrade from Desmond Ritter. It's going to be a slower offense. Uh, limited opportunity for sacks and interceptions, but that's okay. Uh, they, they are one of the better ones. They are playing a turnover machine. And they've been trending in the right direction, which is kind of what we've been looking for. So overall from uh, the Redskins, Sam Howell is going to remain the starter this week. Uh, but that's with J uh, Jacoby Brissett coming in with uh, throwing two fourth quarter touchdowns. So what this means from the toys, uh, I don't necessarily trust any of the wide receivers, even though Scary Terry did do uh, that big spike week 12 for six for 141 and a touchdown. I think 93 of that and the touchdown came when Brissett came on the field. Uh, Curtis Samuel, two touchdowns. I don't know how much I'm going to be chasing that uh, against the Jets this week. And then on top of that, with the, the the running back situation, no news on Brian Robinson out with the hamstring. Uh, was expecting Chris Rodriguez to get a bulk of that like first and second down work. He did 33% snaps, 10 for 35. The one thing that was not uh, expecting was Jonathan Williams, who did get knocked out with a concussion, did get 22% of the snaps. Uh, so Antonio Gibson did not get that bell cow usage. He kind of stayed in the same role he was in 45% snaps, four for 15, five for five for 20. So if uh, B Rob is out again, I don't think any of these guys are necessarily rollable um, this week against the Jets in what would be a bad matchup. And I'm not touching the defense because they're the worst defense out there. Uh, the Cowboys, really strange matchup where the Bills just came out and beat the, the, the Cowboys down and did it in the running game. Um, I do think this downgrades Dak a little bit, even though he does have good matchups against Miami and Detroit. Uh, running back situation, I mean, Tony Pollard is going to disappoint. It's not from a lack of opportunity. It's just the way things are working out overall. It's a weird season for the Cowboys. Dowdle's going to remain the cuff. He should be cuffed to, to uh, Pollard because I definitely could see that he jumps potentially into an RB1 workload if uh, Pollard goes down. And again, with these cuffs, I don't want them on anybody else's roster. It doesn't matter at this point in the season, if there's a cuff available on the wire, um, he should be on someone's roster, even if that guy doesn't have that cuff. Because, you know, if a guy gets injured and you're looking at a, you know, a high end two or a running back one magically appearing in the fantasy finals, that's just not something I want to be dealing with. Um, nothing to say about the Cowboys wide receivers. With the exception, I do have this written down. I think Brandon, uh, Brandon Cooks, 74% snaps, 6 for 2 for 10 in this game. And he did have 97 air yards, I think it was. Uh, 91 air yards in this game. Or, no, excuse me, 92 air yards. So, like, the opportunity is still going to be there for Brandon Cooks as that, like, low-end wide receiver 2, high-end wide receiver 3. Uh, Jake Ferguson, he is the number 2 overall in this offense when it comes to opportunity three straight weeks of eight targets. So I'm sticking with that as a mid-range uh, tight end. There are going to be better guys than uh, Jake Ferguson with higher higher ceilings. There's just not going to be as many guys with that, that, that solid floor that he's going to have 
with the uh, the opportunity he has. Uh, Dallas's defense is going to be a downgrade after what they did against Buffalo. Uh, Miami could potentially you know have um, a really good week and make them less appealing overall. So like uh, I probably would not be streaming around the Cowboys. I just have to realize that they they may not be the league winner that I thought they were going to be. Uh, against the, uh, what would be a predictive bench in the Dolphins this week. All right. Speaking of the Dolphins, so uh, this was a week like don't know how the don't need to care how the sausage is made. He actually played a lot better against the Jets defense, twenty one and twenty four and a touchdown. They just didn't need him to do much. Um, so this was a predictive bench from a fantasy perspective, except for the fact that like it doesn't matter. He actually played well. It just didn't turn into the fantasy production. So that's just how it rolls sometimes. Uh, running backs. Raheem Mostert was at 54% snaps in the blowout, uh, very inefficient at 15 for 42. But you know when he's attached to a good offense, does get uh, fall into the end zone twice and gets home. Uh, at this point, he has 20 total touchdowns, uh, two receiving and 18 rushing. So like uh, you, I could talk about how inefficient he is and how much a chain is going to eat into him. But at this point, like I'm probably rolling him out because of the opportunity to score touchdowns alone. Uh, Devin a chain was down to 30. 39% snaps in the blowout. He is going to be the more valuable uh, guy from a floor standpoint. He's going to get the receiving work. When we get to Tyreek Hill, he's the guy most likely in his offense to be the beneficiary of the vacated targets of Hill because vacated targets tend to go to running backs. Three for three for 30 uh, through the air to go along with a nine for 32 clip. So Raheem Mostert, I would definitely put more a line uh, as the possibility of a boom bust guy. And then A-Chain is going to be more of the floor because of that receiving work. Uh, and then in this one, if you're wondering, uh, Jeff Wilson was at 13% snaps in the blowout. So there is a little bit of cuffability to uh, these guys when it comes to Jeff Wilson, if one of their, if there's an injury to finish the season off. Uh, Tyreek Hill, I did see that they talked about the fact that the MRI was uh, not bad. It, they just don't want to rush him back and have it affect uh, games that are valuable. So they kind of were thinking that they were going to blow the Jets out. I don't know what this means uh, when it comes to rolling him out against Dallas or Buffalo, but uh, I would be expecting at this point if he missed a game that it wouldn't be surprised that he misses another one against Dallas at this point. So monitor your uh, injury reports. Um, if Tyreek Hill misses again and you're looking for a dart throw in your league, it would be Cedric Wilson. He was up to 77% snaps in this game with Hill out. Um, this does definitely upgrade Jalen Waddle into that high end wide receiver two, if not wide receiver one range. Uh, 67 percent snaps, nine for eight for 142. So even though he disappointed, and I don't know how many people picked up Jalen Waddle at the price that he was uh, going for or traded for him later on, he may end up winning leagues with uh, Tyreek Hill going down for Week 16 and Week 17. Even those are two bad matchups. Uh, defensively, uh, puts the Dolphins back on the table uh, after how they've been playing the last three weeks, and then Dallas having that negative uh, negative game against the. Uh, Buffalo. So I think this does definitely upgrade Miami, even though I do think that they have this uh, one of the larger ranges of outcomes. I could definitely see that the Cowboys actually have a rebound week against them. And I could definitely see that they can continue to do what they do, putting pr pressure on teams with their offense. So I, uh, this would be one of the ones that like, if you need the upside, I'd be rolling the Dolphins. If you don't need the upside, there are probably better guys to be trying to uh, chase a floor. Uh, Eagles. So uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier when it comes to Jalen Hurts. So he got uh, downgraded because of an injury and then uh, downgraded again, had to travel late, still looked like it was going to be a game time decision, came out, didn't play particularly well. What did we learn from a fantasy perspective? Well, uh, it, sometimes you have to have the, the roster flexibility late in the week to be able to dump a guy because there's going to be a limited amount of guys that you could have rolled on Monday night. So if, if he would have missed, you were looking at like Drew Locke or Marcus Mariota being your options to be able to potentially move you on to your semis. Uh, so the, going back to uh, what the schedule looks like, being able to make sure that you have the ability to drop a guy late with all the, the Monday night games and having a guy to replace a guy if you're chasing some of the injury news like an Isaiah Pacheco and you haven't uh, – you know, cuffed him at this point. There's some of the other guys to, to know ahead of time. If there is the possibility that another guy is going to uh, have a late scratch with all the, the later start games. Uh, Jalen Hurts is a turnover machine. He's a touch, touchdown machine. So he has a combined 34 or 33 touchdowns to go along with 12 interceptions, eight fumbles, and uh, five of them being lost uh, going on in the season. DeAndre Swiss, 
I, I don't necessarily go, would go on to say like bench DeAndre Swift at this point, but I think he has limited upside. Uh, you know, he's just not going to score touchdowns and he's just not going to have a lot of consistent uh, passing work. Um, the New York Jets would be a good matchup to be rolling him out for, but you know, I don't know how many people are out there still doing that. Rashad Penny would be the cuff still, uh, even though I would say that like you're probably getting like at best a, a low end RB2 to replace a low end RB2 limited opportunities to score. I don't have a lot to say about AJ Brown or Devontae Smith, nor Dallas Goddard. Uh, the defense for Philadelphia, uh, the Jets and Arizona are particularly good roles. So even though they've been disappointing, I do think that they would have some value uh, to be rolled out for the, the last two games of the season. Um, if Especially if you've uh, been streaming and you don't have better options, they probably should be rostered in most leagues already. Teams being, uh, you know, uh, getting ready to roll them out in these, these two matchups. So, all right, uh, the Falcons. Desmond Ritter's been vent benched. Uh, Taylor Heineke's coming back in. I don't think this does anything to the toys. The big problem is Arthur Smith. I did see today that uh, the Falcons uh, ownership did come out and they did kind of change their mind on Arthur Smith, say that this was a, a disappointing season and they will wait to see how the season finishes up before uh, making up their mind in the offseason. So that would potentially upgrade uh, guys like Bijan. Uh, very disappointing week. I shouldn't have to tell you that. I, I don't know how many people are left that have Bijan. Um, on their roster, 58% stop, seven for 11 to go along with three for three for one and a fumble lost. So if I pull up my notes on the Falcons, um, he did have a red zone carry. Uh, Tyler Ayer was at 50% snaps uh, in this one, 14 for 45, another six for six for one. But Cordell Patterson comes in and uh, he has two red zone opportunities and he does cash one of them in. So that's part of what's uh, affecting the Bijan shares. Um, I don't care what anybody says about the good matchups that someone has going into the playoffs. They still have to be able to produce, and we have to be able to predict that they're going to produce. So when it comes to your uh, – if you still have a Bijan shares and you're still avail alive in your playoffs, like your guess is as good as mine of what he's going to be able to do against the Colts in Chicago to finish the season off. And it's the same thing when it comes to Drake London and uh, Kyle Pitts. I thought we turned the table last week on these guys when uh, – you know, Pitts or Drake London had its spike week, um, you know, the 11 targets. And it just like, I don't even know how you only give a guy three targets and expect that anything's going to happen. So again, if you're rolling these guys out to finish the season off, I don't know. And again, uh, Kyle Pitts was up to 85% snaps and he dip, drops to 65% snaps. He may be the one guy out, out of all these guys, I think has at least a floor because again, he plays tight end. Um, and then uh, from a defensive perspective, the Falcons are an okay role against uh Gardner Minshew and the Colts and still against uh, Chicago, they're going to be downgraded from a fantasy perspective on defense because of uh, potentially how bad the offense could be. So again, uh, when it comes to how valuable I think these guys are, uh, you know, there are probably other guys I would be rather going up against than trying to predict what the game flow is going to be uh, to predict what the, the defense is going to be able to do from a scoring perspective. All right, Giants. So uh, Tommy DeVito got knocked out, and then he came back in, but the game was basically out of hand at that point. Uh, so like, I, outside of like the memes, I wouldn't be rolling out uh, Tommy DeVito against Philadelphia. Philadelphia defense hasn't been as good, but I just don't think there's any uh, fantasy value in Tommy DeVito. Um, this will definitely downgrade uh, Saquon Barkley, but I don't know how many people are left that are rolling Saquon Barkley like, out. Only 50% snaps in this game. I don't really care about the cuffs because of that. Uh, from the wide receiver perspective, if there's a dart throw now this week, and this has been all over the place, so I don't know how predictive any of this is. Uh, Darius Saquon was at 95% snaps with the eight targets to go with uh, 63 passing yards. So maybe that's the guy that I'd be looking for. Uh, Jalen Hyatt was down to 71% snaps, three targets, no receptions. And then we thought maybe that Wandale Robinson was going to be a real wide receiver. He's not. 85% snaps, four for four for 25. Now, the other thing that uh, I didn't even think about how this would change the passing game with Darren Waller being active. He was only at 42% snaps, six targets, four receptions for 40 yards. Um, I could definitely see over the last three games of the season, especially because they got to see what he, what he's going to be for next year. You know, and I do think that he's going to be rather fragile, even if he comes back next year, I could definitely see the snap share will go up with Waller to finish off the year. He's probably going to be the number one in a bad offense. 
because he plays tight end, if he's available, like they're going to be worth dart throws, but he's also going to downgrade uh, all the other receiving uh, tar- or options on this offense. So if we were trying to chase any of those things, that's probably the reason why they're not worth uh, chasing to finish the season off. And uh, believe it or not, the Giants do have a little bit of sneaky uh, stream ability uh, against the Eagles because, as I pointed out, Jalen Hurts is a turnover machine. Uh, the Jaguars. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff here with the Jaguars to break down. So right now, uh, Trevor Lawrence uh, is in the concussion pro- protocol. He also has that ankle. Did not look particularly good against Baltimore this week. Uh, Tampa Bay would be a good matchup to be rolling him out if he's cleared. I do think that C.J. Beathard uh, is going to be a, a high-end streamer if he's available. Uh, I do have the, the the stats. Again, stats lie, but Tampa Bay is the second-worst passing defense out there. So I would be uh, rather okay rolling out C.J. Beathard as a one-week rental in what would be one of the better matchups. He, believe it or not, C.J. Beathard is my uh, quarterback, too, when it comes to streamability this week um, behind Zach Wilson, if Zach Wilson is available. Um, anyway, uh, ETN, this is kind of starting to worry me overall, but with the, the Zay Jones injury, uh, vacated targets do tend to go to running backs. I can definitely see that they are going to try and get ETN more involved in the passing game with the six targets. So again, uh, overall, if I'm still alive and I have ETN, this is a plus matchup for the next two weeks. Um, if that does anything for you, I would be cuffing my ETN shares. Dearness Johnson would be in that RB2 to running back one type of range if uh, ETN goes down. So uh, from the wide receivers, uh, Calvin Ridley is going to stay in that dart throw type of range because of how inconsistent the offense has been. You know, some offense we thought we were going to be good or going to be bad. Um, I think that's part of the problem with the uh, the Jaguars. So Zay Jones is quote unquote day to day with a hamstring. I don't know what that means. The guy who stepped in uh, when he went down in this game was Tim Jones, uh, the third year guy. I could definitely see that he's going to get the uh, he's going to be the number two in this offense on the outside. I could definitely see that the other guy that's going to benefit from this is going to be Parker Washington. But outside of uh, some of the dart throws that are available, I don't know how much I'd be trusting any of this going forward. Inconsistent offense, potentially a backup quarterback, trying to catch the number two or number three guy because they're going to take away everybody else. I I don't know. Even though this would be the week if I was going to get cute against Tampa Bay's uh, passing defense, it would be this week. And then the other guy that was really disappointing in all this is Evan Ingram. Um, I was expecting him to take over the offense as the number one option. Uh, eight, nine, 12 targets. It drops to six, uh, four receptions, 24, 28 yards. Wasn't treated like a real tight end. And again, like, I don't know. You know, I, If he's my tight end, I'm still rolling him out against these two next, t- next week's matchups. But again, he goes from being like um, an elite type tight end to like just one of those like, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of guys. Uh, the defense uh, does have some streamability against Tampa Bay uh, and Baker Mayfield. Uh, and and obviously, if if I have the ability to pick up Jacksonville right now to play Carolina, it's something I would think about doing. All right, the Jets. So uh, Zach Wilson is in the concussion protocol. He will start if he's available. Um, he didn't look good on 38% snaps, four for 11 for 26 yards and one t- or one fumble lost. Um, but again, from a fantasy perspective, he didn't play the whole game, so it's it's really hard to evaluate that, and the Jets are bad, period. When it comes to overall streamability, uh, you know, unfortunately, if he's available, he would be like one of the top streamers this week because the Washington Commanders are the worst defense when it comes to passing yards and points per game. That's just how it goes. And again, stats lie. Uh, Zach Wilson does have a little nimbly bimbly. I would not necessarily believe that he's going to pass the protocol but the other reason why I would be more interested in Zach Wilson is if I have Brees Hall or uh, Garrett Wilson and I'm going to p- try and roll them out for my fantasy semis, um, I would not be rolling them out unless Zach Wilson was the quarterback versus the other guys. Uh, Brees Hall, again, he's going to be one of those like boom bust wide or running back threes at this point. Um, even though the matchup is good against Washington, I have him in my, the league that I'm still available. I don't know if I'm going to be rolling him out. Uh, it, it may, again, depend on if Zach Wilson's available. Uh, Garrett Wilson is probably the same thing. The league that I had, Garrett Wilson, I got bounced. I don't have to worry about that 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 problem. Um, if you have Garrett Wilson, uh, you know he's going to be maybe the premier wide receiver three uh, guy to be rolling out there against Washington. I, I don't care about the Tyler Conklin and the defense against the Jets. This is this is really interesting. 
they may be the number one defense overall when it comes to playing the Redskins this week and Sam Howell. Um, there's two caveats to this. If the, the, the offense is so bad that the defense is on the field that downgrades the defense. Um, and then the other thing is uh, Jacoby Brissett came in the game last week, looked better. So I could definitely see that Sam Howell is going to have a short lease to finish the season off um, as they evaluate players. So again, I, I would probably guess that like my expectations of the New York Jets are probably closer to a 40 degree day than having the ability to, to, to have a spike week. All right, the lines. So I'm going to say this right now for you guys out there in uh, you know fantasy land. Jared Goff is really bad. He's going to have a limited opportunity to score touchdowns because of the, the, the toys in the offense. So go ahead and roll him out and expect five more touchdowns this week. Um, Minnesota, Minnesota blitzes. Minnesota takes away the run. Um, I don't know how predictive this week is going to be. He does have a lot of toys. He can be a little bit of a turnover machine. Ten touchdowns to go with four fumbles lost. So, like, you know, that's going to be on you if you think that you have the, the cojones to, to chase the dragon on those five touchdowns and that 30-point week after the, the six-point week the week before that. So, anyway, Jameer Gibbs, uh, he is the 1A, 48% stops, 11 for 66, and a touchdown to go with four for three for 16 and another touchdown. The other thing to realize with Jameer Gibbs is that uh, he, he's going to be the guy that gets the more valuable touches in this offense. J uh, David Montgomery is going to get more of the, the less efficient carries. So Jameer Gibbs is going to be the guy that you probably want to have. And again, against uh, Minnesota, uh, I could definitely see Minnesota being the guy that's going to take away the interior of the defense, forcing to the edge in the passing game. I do think that's a good role. We'll talk about uh, Dallas next week. Uh, David Montgomery, I do think, is a downgrade. 52% uh, staff. This is something I talked about before. He is going to end up being more and more touchdown dependent. Um, luckily, there's only two games left in the season. So uh, who knows? I'm not benching him because of uh, you know anybody that can get 20 opportunities a game is worth it, especially in a good offense. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, the Sun God, did have nine targets, seven receptions, 112 yards, and a touchdown. This is where it gets a little hanky. Um, when we look at like Sam Laporta and the three touchdowns that go with six for five for 56, he's going to probably finish his tight end one on the year overall. Um, but again, like it, I don't know how many uh, opportunities that they're going to have to have a six touchdown game to finish the season off against Minnesota and Dallas. Um, those touchdowns are going to get vultured between this, these guys. It's just one of those like, hey, fantasy, you, 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 when you're right, you're right. Um, when, when it doesn't matter if you're uh, how the sausage is made. Um, if you have your Laporta shares, if you have your uh, Jameer, Jameer Chase shares or Jameer Gibbs shares. So the other guy to talk about this is uh, Jamison Williams when it comes to chasing that spike week. 68% snap, 7 for 4 for 47. Um, definitely Minnesota I can see happening because of how much they blitz. And all he has to do is get home once on uh, the right deep ball. And then uh, the, from a defensive perspective when it comes to the Lions, uh, Minnesota okay role against Nick Mullins. They haven't been particularly good, even even in that blowout against Denver. You know, only two only two uh, two sacks and uh, one forced fumble. Um, so, like again, I don't know how much you're expecting to have this spike week, even though they, the offense could potentially put them in that position to go force the uh, the pressure and the turnovers. Let's see, and then I, I don't know how much I would be uh, really caring about rolling them against uh, you know Dallas at home in Week 17 into that. So uh, on the other hand, when it comes to the Packers, I would be uh, would be rolling them out against the Carolina on the road. I think that's a pretty good uh, 40 degree day chance with some upside. Uh, Jordan Love again. I don't need to care how the sausage is made. The two touchdown passes. I, I don't really care uh, going forward. Uh, good matchup against uh, Carolina. Carolina is so bad on offense that it downgrades the other team's offense. Believe that or not. Uh, what's it? Aaron Jones led the backfield at 48% snaps, 13 for 53, uh, 4 for 4 for 16 uh, through the air. And then you had uh, A.J. Dillon being out with a thumb. Uh, the other interesting thing in all this, besides the you know, uh, uh, Kenyon Drake sighting at 8% snaps, was uh, our boy Patrick Taylor is still in the mix at 43% snaps, 1 for 6 to go along for two for two for negative four. So again, I think this definitely cuts into uh, Aaron Jones if he's the starter. The big thing behind why the Packers running backs have been kind of downgraded is Jaden Reed. He's almost kind of this like running back uh, out of the slot. They get him a, a lot of uh, red zone work. So he's probably the most valuable toy overall besides Tucker Craft. Um, so he's 
from a, a from a wide receiver perspective, he's a running back usage wise. Um, if that makes any sense, because he gets the red zone design red zone work, and he's going to just be a volume based play. So from a wide receiver standpoint, he's downgraded because he's going to have those. Uh, he's not going to get as many of the downfield low low uh, you know probability shots that lead to higher efficiency plays. Um, but overall, like I would be rolling him out if I can't. I talked about this in chasing the dragon. Romeo Dobbs just doesn't appear to be the guy they want to get the ball to. Uh, he's going to be this like uh, red zone vulture. So that uh, would move Don Tomvey and Wicks up there into this like wide receiver three type dart throw, a uh, high end type of play, maybe even a wide receiver two. If uh, Christian Watson continues to be out 78% stop seven for six for 97. And again, that can easily be converted into some touchdowns. Um, overall, the guy that I was a little interested in this uh, Samaje, uh, uh, Samore Torre was inactive for week 15. So that guy gives me an idea of how they do want things to shake out in the passing game. And again, Christian Watson sat out. So um, on top of all of this, I would be monitoring the injury report um, before I really start worrying about this. Uh, Wicks is either going to be a guy if I need that dart throw or I, I know my opponent is going to have to roll a guy out. That would be more what I would think Wicks, Wicks is going to be. And again, of, of some of these guys that are going to be available, Jordan Love is going to be in that okay type category. Um, so it's, he's not attached to a bad offense. Uh, the Panthers, I don't care about Bryce Young and the fantasy overall. The only guy that really has value uh, is Chuba Hubbard. Um, Volume-based RB2 in a bad offense, uh, 73% stops, 22 for 87, 2 for 2 for 16. Probably going to be there for the next next two weeks. Volume-based, I don't know how many opportunities he's going to have to score touchdowns. Um, the ghost of Adam Thielen is probably just going to be like that, that safe floor, wide receiver 3, 95% stops, 7 for 4 for 43. Uh, Jonathan Mingo. I am not as interested in chasing him anymore, and the reason why is because his air yards went down to only 58% snaps this week. So when it comes to him having the ability to have a spike week as a wide receiver three, it's just probably not going to be there. It moves him down into um, almost this like the same uh, safe floor as Adam Thielen, and if if I'm going to be chasing chasing a safer floor, um, you know, as my wide receiver three, I'd be rather chasing that upside. Uh, again, limited opportunity to score. J uh, Green Bay and Jacksonville are not necessarily bad defenses. And Green Bay, as we already learned, uh, statistically is one of the better uh, passing defenses, even though they got absolutely torched when it came to uh, the, the the Bucks and actually moved them down from like the top five, top seven. Um, and then you see the, the Panthers are so bad that no one passes on them because they don't have to. That's just how bad the Panthers are. Uh, let's see when it comes to moving on no tight ends defense. I don't care about uh, moving on the Patriots. So I don't care about uh, Bailey Zappi. Uh, no news on Ramondre Stevenson. If you're worried about that uh, Zeke and what would be a negative matchup against the, the Broncos this week, going to be that volume based RB two. same, the same reason I talked about this uh, when uh, he took over for Ramondre after week 13, um, the low opportunities to score going to just be this uh, PPR type of guy, five for six for 21. That's going to be in PPR and half PPR type of leagues. And again, I don't know how many opportunities he's going to have the score this week against uh, Denver. So yeah, that you do you when it comes to you, if you want to be rolling out your Zeke shares in the semis, uh, none of these wide receivers I care about whatsoever. Um, and then Hunter Henry is going to be an okay dart throw as a tight end chasing the, the, the touchdowns that he's had over the last couple of weeks. He does look like he's the number one in the offense. It's a bad offense. Denver's defense has been all over the place uh, from you know looking pretty good to being the one that got 70 hung on him uh, against Miami. So, yeah, 72% snaps, 9 for 7 for 66. So if you really are in a tough spot uh, chasing Hunter Henry, is probably not a bad thing. Defensively, the, the defense for the Patriots this week against the Broncos is going to be in that safe floor with some upside. Uh, you know, primarily because I don't know if anybody really knows what the Broncos are as an offense, if they're bad or just okay. Uh, the Raiders. So this is another really interesting thing. So uh, the interim head coach right now, Antonio Pierce, is kind of fighting to see if he can be the head coach next year. And if he goes 0-3, I think he's got no chance to get the job. If he goes 1-2, and I don't think he's got a very good uh, chance to win the job unless he beats KC. And then, you know, if he gets in that like two and one, three and oh type range, he's probably going to keep his job. So on top of that, like, I don't know how predictive Aiden O'Connell is going to be against uh, the Chiefs. But overall, 
he's going to put himself in the best opportunity to win, and it's going to be more so sacrificing what the Raiders have in the future for him to be able to find out, or for the Raiders to find out if they have the right head coach. So Josh Jacobs, uh, you know, if he gives them the best opportunity to win against uh, KC, I could definitely see them rolling him out. Otherwise, this could be another week where we get Zamir White in that mid-range uh, running back two uh, type of situation that he had in uh, you know, week 15. 70% snap, 17 for 69, a touchdown to go for four for three for 16. So I could th- see that being something that happens again. And you know, at the very least, like if I'm rolling out my Zamir White shares, I could probably be expecting that you know he's going to get a little bit more passing work um, you know, that the four for three for 16, that's going to happen again, uh, maybe chasing that touchdown and, uh, a, an okay amount of rushing work. So I like my opportunity, but again, I would be having to monitor Josh Jacobs going forward. I was a little concerned that Amir Abdullah was going to eat into this a little bit more and, and he's not, he still may be the passing down back, but I was expecting the possibility of being a split backfield. It's not, um, and at the very least with uh, Zamir White, I think I don't I didn't like what I saw of Zamir White, but I think he did enough to at least get the opportunity again um, if uh, Josh Jacobs out from a passing perspective. I do think that uh, Aiden O'Connell finishing the season off is going to allow you to roll your Devonte Adams shares out. He's probably still going to have those double digit targets. Um, that's something to be uh, paying attention to. I don't know how much I'd be trusting uh, Jacoby Myers to finish the season off uh, at all. Uh, there, Trey Tucker is going to have a little bit of possibility to have that spike week again, like he did against the Chargers. 45% stats, four for three, uh, for 59 and two touchdowns, and especially against a team like Kansas City, where uh, they could try and take away uh, Devontae Adams. And then Michael Mayer, only a stash uh, overall in Dynasty Leagues, and their defense is a sneaky play against KC. Again, we talk about KC being uh, a little bit of uh, difficult situation to uh kind of guess on uh how good their offense is going to be i was wondering if i already talked about kc or not i've done four podcasts today um this may be the one i take otherwise like i i don't know how they're going to turn out overall so uh matt stafford a little disappointing against that plus matchup against the redskins only two touchdown passes already talked about that um overall if i was rolling out matt stafford this week against new orleans I do think he's downgraded as a streamer. The uh, New Orleans is one of the better defenses overall. Uh, Kieran Williams, he's a league winner, 77% snaps, 27, 152, a touchdown to go with seven targets, five receptions, three yards, um, two fumbles lost. Uh, Cooper Cup and uh, Puka Nakua, at this point, we we definitely know they're going to cannibalize each other. Uh, Trying to guess whose week it's going to be. Saints do tend to run a little bit more man. Uh, so if we're trying to guess who's going to win, uh, you know how they're going to take away a guy. Like I can see how both of them get home. You know, so I'm rolling both of them out. I'm probably not going to get cute, knowing they can burn me. Not going to roll out any tight ends. And then the Rams overall are an okay roll against New Orleans. Um, and uh, Derek Derek Carr. Uh, New Orleans is not particularly good on offense, and that's the main reason why I'd be rolling them out. You know, they're going to give me a 40 degree day if that's what I want to do. Uh, the Ravens. Uh, don't have a lot to say about Jamar, uh, Lamar Jackson. This is a matchup against San Francisco where I could consider benching him, but you know, like you are, you know, uh, benching a guy regardless of the matchup that can give you the quarterback one overall. Uh, let's see. Keaton Mitchell is out with an ACL. They did sign Melvin Gordon. I don't necessarily think that changes any of the other guys value. Uh, Gus Edwards is primarily his value is going to be able to, uh, come from falling in the end zone in the goal line. And uh, Justice Hill is still going to have a role even at 26% snaps. So I, this is just another guy in the rotation. I think they like having guys that they can count on doing certain things. Um, and I don't think it necessarily – maybe it upgrades Gus uh, Gus Hill a li- or Gus he- Edwards a little bit. Um, but, again, like it's the receiving work. I don't know how much receiving work is going to be there. You can see with uh, Lamar Jackson this last game uh, in the beatdown of the Jaguars, only 171 passing yards. Um, he's the number one running back, 12 carries, 97 yards. So again, like, I don't know how it changes anything. Um, Zay Flowers, a rumor has it, he was walking around in a boot after the game. So like, you know, if that's true or not, I haven't seen anything else besides Reddit room, rumors. Um, he was at 84% snaps, two for one for seven in this game. If we're chasing who the wide receiver two is, it's not Nelson Aguilar. He was down to 40% snaps. Uh, uh, Odell Beckham 
He was at 54% snaps, three targets, one for 14. Rashad Bateman, uh, 44% snaps, three for six for 39. Um, the big the big news out of all of this is Isaiah Likely is probably the number one overall option in the offense. Uh, 74% snaps, six for five for 70 and a touchdown. So the only guy outside of Lamar Jackson that I would really feel comfortable rolling out is Isaiah Likely, and that's partially because he's a tight end. And he is also in the conversation for uh, uh, flex because he's the number one. He looks like he's the number one in the uh, the offense. And again, with the, the Ravens to finish the season off, I'm probably not going to feel really good about rolling him out against San Francisco and Miami to finish the finish things out. But that's up to you. Uh, the Saints, uh, I'll, I'll say it again with Derek Carr. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be playing him because, uh, you know, I think he's going to be cannibalized by Taysom Hill and then he's going to throw three more touchdowns in this game. Uh, running back wise, Kamara was the guy, uh, you know, where's it at? 52% snap, 16 for 66, five for five for 44 in the passing game. You know, that's, that's elite running back usage. He just didn't find the end zone. I don't know how much I'd be cuffing my Jamal Williams shares. He is the cuff at 47% snaps. Uh, Kendra Miller is trending towards actually playing limited on the estimated practice report this week. Um, so uh, outside of that stash, uh, maybe he gets the, uh, the higher uh, value work if uh, Alvin Kamara goes down. Uh, Chris Olave was out in this game. Those vacated targets, you know, some of them did go to Lynn Bowden. He was at uh, five targets, three for 31 on 60% snaps. A.T. Perry doesn't appear to be a thing, down to 42% snaps, two for two for 34 in this game. And then uh, Rashid Shahid, he did see 58% snaps, four for three for 36. So again, um, outside of Chris Olave, I'm probably not interested in the work. Um, maybe as a dart throw, Lynn Bowden will continue to be worked into the offense if uh, uh, Olave is out or not. At this late in the season, I don't know how fantasy relevance that's going to be. Uh, Jawan Johnson, he did vulture a touchdown to go along with uh, Jimmy Graham vulturing a touchdown in this game. Taysom Hill, only three opportunities. I, I do, uh, there, there may be a possibility that part of the reason why he didn't get uh, as many opportunities is coming off the injury. Um, he is a guy that I think as a tight end, if you are in a bad spot, he's going to have that massive upside. So against the Rams and the the uh, Buccaneers, the last two games of the season, I would feel comfortable rolling him out, realizing he can't lose me my week. He can only win it for me. And then the Saints are a good roll uh, against Tampa Bay, um, maybe not against the Rams. Again, the Rams may be in that okay to good type of uh, area, uh, offense. All right, Seattle. So this is another interesting one. Uh, Geno Smith was trending towards playing, and then he is trending towards playing again this week, uh, expected to get a full week of practice. Drew Locke went out there, uh, threw a dot at the end of the game to win it uh, against the Steelers or against the, the Eagles. Kenneth Walker, if you're a Kenneth Walker owner, you finally are happy. Uh, I don't know how many people are left that are Kenneth Walker owners. 56% snaps, 19 for 86, and a touchdown, 3 for 3 for 26. I don't know how much I would uh, be able to predict the Tennessee and – Steelers game, but I do like the high efficiency that he had in this game. Uh, this does move Zach Charbonnet out of the uh, potentially to start as an RB2 range. Um, I don't think I would trust him to finish the season off. 44% snaps, 4 for 16, and one target. Uh, wide receivers, I did say that I think that Jackson Smith and Jigma is the only safe guy that I would be running. He did do 4 for 4 for 48, got the uh, the uh, game-winning touchdown. Uh, Tyler Lockett, 9 targets, 3 receptions, 21 yards. Um, and then DK Metcalf, DK Metcalf is going to be in that uh, low opportunity, high efficiency range, 92% snaps, six for five for 78. So again, DK Metcalf is probably going to have the best ceiling to floor. And then uh, Jackson Smith and Jigma is going to have the floor. And then Lockett's just going to have the ceiling to finish the season off. Uh, the last two matchups that they have are against Tennessee and Pittsburgh. And again, I think those are going to be really difficult to project because those are, uh, you know, kind of dirty, ugly, stinky teams. And then the defense is going to have appeal against those two teams. Don't know who the quarterback is going to be. Um, there's a possibility of getting all three quarterbacks against uh, for Tennessee this week, Malik Willis, Ryan Tannehill, and uh, Will Levis. We'll talk more about them. Um, I do think they're an okay role. Uh, uh, the problem is the Seattle Seahawks haven't been particularly good at stopping the run, and I could definitely see Tennessee just letting uh, Derrick Henry run to finish his career off with them. 
and then uh, the Steelers to finish things off. And that might be uh, dependent upon who the quarterback is. So right now, Kenny Pickett has a chance to play this week as poor uh, Mike Tomlin. Uh, Mason Rudolph is going to be the guy that's predicted to start. He is an upgrade from Mitch Trubisky, even though Mitch Trubisky is the better fantasy asset. As I spill my drink. Uh, Najee Harris, you can see, is uh, you know no activity on Tuesday. If he doesn't go, that's going to massively upgrade uh, Jalen Warren, potentially into uh, RB1 land um, overall, even though this is not particularly the greatest matchup in the world against Cincinnati. I'll take that back. Cincinnati is really bad against the run. So, yeah, I would I would definitely be looking to roll both these guys out this week. Uh, George Pickens, um, he had, if I look this up, George Pickens had uh, like 147 air yards this, this week. Um, so, yeah, if if I need a dart throw and ma- with Mason Rudolph, um, I do like Mason Rudolph better to get the toys going than I do uh, Mitch Trubisky. Um, but it also would slightly upgrade De- uh, Deontay Johnson with uh, M- Mason Rudolph in the game. I could definitely see Deontay Johnson sticking with the higher volume of uh, targets. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, he is tending to a knee issue. I-, I don't even know if he's necessarily in streamer range at this point. And the Steelers defense isn't particularly good. I, I wouldn't like them against uh, Jake Browning having turned things around. And then Seattle's got enough toys that I would probably be uh, trending in a different direction. All right. Uh, Texans. CJ Stroud does look like he's going to miss this week again. Vegas has changed the lines uh, between uh, the Texans and the Browns. Uh, the Texans were a two point favorite. Now they're a two point dog with uh, expecting CJ Stroud to not play. Uh, CJ or uh, Case Keenum is a, a game manager at best. I'm not going to be fantasy relevant more than likely watch. He's going to finish his quarterback one, but uh, overall, like I do think he does keep the toys on track a little better than Davis Mills does. David Mills is Davis Mills is all over the place. Uh, Big news out of this is Damian Pierce was down to 5% snaps in this game. Um, This would put uh, Devin Singletary in the the range of, uh, well, he already had running back one usage. It just becomes an issue of of can he get through uh, the Browns defense. 75% 75% snaps, 26 for 121, 5 for 4 for 49. And if he can keep the uh, the, the receiving work, then that gives him the floor to be uh, matchup independent. And the other news out of this is they released Mike Boone and then uh, Dare, whatever, Dare O is now the receiving back uh, for them at 19% snaps. I don't know what this necessarily does for Damian Pierce because I don't know how you would be rolling him out. Uh, I could definitely see him being a healthy scratch this week. If that makes any sense. So what I heard was Nico College could Nico Collins could have played. They they basically benched him. He he did look good during warmups. That's what the rumors have it. Um, so I would expect that he's going to play this week. Robert Woods was a guy out there, eighty one percent snaps. Yes, sometimes there are wide receivers like Jake Bobo that are uh, you know uh, blocking wide receivers. Uh, the other guy, John Mechie, that I was expecting to have the uptick again, down to ten percent snaps in the Tennessee game. So that's unfortunate. Uh, and then 84% snaps for Xavier Hutchinson. Um, again, if we're trying to uh, predict how this is going to uh, shake out, I, I, I think this may have more to do with the uh, wide receivers when it comes to week 17 than it does week 16. I can imagine the Texans are just going to try and grind the game down um, and win ugly against uh, the, the Browns. If they try and turn this into a knife fight, they're going to lose uh, against the, the Browns defense. And then uh, the the Houston defense, I do think is disappointing, but they have some streamer ability against uh, Joe Flacco. And then the only other guy I'm really really would be interested in, uh, Dalton uh, Schultz was up to 84% stats, five for four for 58. So he's going to be in that mid range type uh, low end wide receiver one. As I pull up the Titans, so uh, no idea who the quarterback's going to be. Will Levis has a high ankle sprain. It could be Malik Willis with the the you know. The nimbly bimbly, uh, they might turn back to Ryan Tannehill to finish the season off again. It doesn't really matter uh, from the Titans' perspective. They're not playing for a, a playoff spot. I, I don't know what they're going to see in rolling out Ryan Tannehill, uh, you know, other than the fact that maybe he gives them the best chance to win. They might want to see what they have. Um, Malik Willis, he looked better in the, the offseason. If you're in deeper leagues and they roll uh, with Malik Willis, he does have the receiving or the rushing floor that we'd be looking for. Uh, but overall, I don't know. I did see that Derrick Henry basically tweeted that like this is his swan song um, in uh, uh, Tennessee. He's going downhill. Uh, you know, fifty-four percent snaps, six, sixteen carries, nine y- total yards. 
another four for four for one in the passing game. So, uh, you know, Tajay Spears, this is another guy like I could definitely see that they're going to give him the opportunity to have a bell cow role at some point in the season with uh, three games left to go. So I would be picking him up with the possibility of him uh, getting that role in the finals. If you're in a, you know, one of the regular leagues that does like a week 17 chip. All right. To finish off DeAndre Hopkins, uh, nine targets. So that's going to keep him in that wide receiver two type conversation. Um, Traylon Burks is going to slowly but surely work his way back up. I'm actually thinking from a dynasty perspective of uh, Corey Davis, 76% stats, three for three for 62 in this one. So he's going to have a little bit of boom bust wide receiver three. Uh, one of the things we'll have to think about going down the line, uh, how 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 uh, cute we want to be rolling him out. This takes Chig off the board because of the quarterback situation. Um, believe it or not, Tennessee still has some streamability against uh, the Seahawks, whether or not it's Geno Smith or Drew Locke, both a little bit of turnover machines. And then finally, to finish off with the Vikings, uh, one minute or one hour and 10 minutes. So Nick Mullins is going to remain the quarterback. Uh, two, two interceptions to go along with two touchdowns, three sacks overall. So like we can be rolling uh, our lion shares out against him. I also think he keeps the toys on track. Um, the big news out of this, Alexander Madison, Maybe he put, he practiced. Maybe he doesn't this week. Um, I can definitely bet that Ty Chandler gets um, at least a running back two usage, if not still a running back one usage to finish off to finish the year. Uh, let's see. Jo uh, Justin Jefferson had 10, 10 for seven for 84. To, so he's back up in that wide receiver one range. Uh, Jordan Addison is going to maintain that boom bust wide receiver three, kind of what we thought. He may have a neat, enough of a floor right now to be a wide, a low end wide receiver two to finish him off. I could definitely understand why we weren't predicting pre predicting him to do a six for six for 111 and two touchdowns coming off the stretch without really knowing what we had in Nick Mullins. Um, you know, TJ Hawkinson uh, did TJ Hawkinson thing six for six or seven for six for 63. And then to finish off with the defense, we have Minnesota uh, is uh, an okay role against Detroit because Jared Goff can be uh, um, unpredictable. They will stop the run and they will take away or they will blitz. So the you know, boom bust Minnesota Vikings against the Detroit Lions and uh, potentially a, a, a sneaky floor against uh, Green Bay. And then to finish it off, when we talk about the schedule, if you're this late in the deal, uh, the streaming defenses that I would be interested overall uh, the Colts against Atlanta would be one. Uh, Seattle against the, uh, the Titans would be another one. Uh, I already talked about Minnesota being kind of sneaky. Uh, the the Jets against uh, Washington, if they're available, would be one. Green Bay against Carolina would be another one. Uh, you're, no one's streaming Cleveland. I'm trying to think. Chicago against Arizona would not be necessarily bad. Uh, you could... if. Safe floor plays would be Denver and New England both ways. Uh, sneaky uh, play would be the Raiders. Uh, the Eagles you know, are, are a roll against the Giants if they're available. No one's no one's uh, doing that other things. And then uh, the sneaky the sneaky streamers would be Zach Wilson if he's available and C.J. Beathard if he can go against the, uh, the Tampa Bay. Also, I, I could definitely see that Nick Mullins is going to be streamable against Detroit overall. So anyway, that's about all I got this week. Um, you know, hopefully this helps you get to your chips and I'll see you uh, on the grift.